Hello, Tata. Hey, Jilly Bean. How's it going this week? It's going pretty good. How about you? I heard you said it was a full moon. Yes. Again. Haven't you heard the howling? No. Oh, the werewolf effect is what I call it. Is your is little Sammy howling at the moon? He's definitely more agitated and he's been scooting his ass everywhere. So <laughs> <laughs> Do his anal glands swell from the... Uh, something happens to his anal glands during this week. <laughs> he gets very scooty and he does a little rotation on his butt. He so, spins. Yeah. yeah, he's spinning. So he does that extra on the full moon. He certainly does. He's <laughs> agitated. Well, hello, fine-tuned females. As you can tell, we are discussing the full moon now because Tata believes that we are full-on affected by the full moon, and I'm dubious. Well, I well, I see you and how you change. Well, you don't think you do. <laughs> Jilly Bean doesn't think she does. But she gets really wired the week of the full moon and aggressive. And I that's, do? Yeah, that's when you always have your issues, I find. And maybe it's because it's in sync with your fake PMS. Hmm. But... Oh, well, we say fake PMS because <laughs> I'm on one of those... I use this birth control pill that um, gives you a... That, that got rid of my period because I had it bad. I mean, you know, yeah. I suffered with like eight day long periods since I was about 15. Oh, my God. Yeah, it was miserable. And uh, anyway, so the pill made my period lighter and last for a normal amount of time. And now I'm at the age where... Well, we'll talk about that in a minute, but I'm at the age now where I have to think about do I go off the pill and go on to the creams right or not but let's finish up this yeah full moon so thing the full moon thing i mean it, uh, you know i think there's some scientific facts behind the maybe it's magnetic force that comes from the moon and it just sort of you know like you tend to get more animals tend to get a little bit more antsy uh the ocean tends to get more waves and i just believe that there's an energy that comes from the full moon i'm very hyper during that week i'm very efficient and i can also be really cranky because I, i'm testy i'm a little bit more hot about you know headed about things so i get definitely affected and um, my dad you know he really believes in that too so and your dad's like a science guy your yeah, dad's really a, smart right yeah, your dad's a retired pilot yeah he's he a was retired in the army. pilot he was in the army and he just does nothing night and day but watch all these science programs and you know he loves everything that has to do with you know outer space and yeah. science and the world and how things happen and so he's always educating me on things like that but i definitely feel like i can't sleep probably the day of the full moon like are going to be my two nights of those two nights that it's on full force uh, i get the worst sleep and the worst full moon is the blue moon because that's even like more intense what does the blue moon mean i forgot i, I know, know every I time know. we only have it a couple of times we have the yeah. harvest moon like yeah once or twice. It's, uh, all these moons the red moons and all these moons i mean they're just very powerful they have a lot of magnetism and a lot of energy source and i think it's maybe maybe it's due to where it is in relationship to the earth and it is it's yeah that, it's that magnetic right. pull so but i don't believe that magnets I mean, it's, <laughs> it's pulling me to it like i can go and run a marathon if you want to run a marathon i'll do it when there's a full moon because that's the only time i have this crazy energy i just i don't notice it <laughs> i do well maybe our fine-tuned female friends out yeah, there will let us know definitely. what they think about the full moon because you know with astrology there was one time we were taking our our weekly walk with the dogs right. and you were reading me my horoscope right. and i'm just sitting there like <laughs> yeah she doesn't believe it ah. i really believe it but you have to go intensely into it with your birth date the time of birth and then i do the chinese one and then i do the regular one i really believe there are elements if you really dig deep that are really true to you and your personality well i saw this documentary that they have i think it's on netflix and um it's called explained it's a series on netflix and they explain to you like some scientific thing like one really interesting one was about the orgasm another mm. one was about the stock market how it started so well, really there's just, a way to lose your orgasm <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> right now the stock market right. but so interesting like topics that people just wonder how did this start or right. what's this all about and one was about horoscope scopes and it's just made up <laughs> like it became a thing it was like someone called themselves an astrologer back in like the 1930s and put this in a newspaper and it just took off and got really popular but there's like actually there is no science behind it but I mean I do have friends that like are tarot card readers right. like she does parties and stuff and she reads your charts your star charts yeah and she had a lot of really interesting insight but according to explained it's a whole bunch of hooey 
Maybe, but you know, I think it has something to do with the way the, way the stars are aligned when you're born, and you know, and and what's going on in the world. I don't know. Well, astrologers like, say that. Yeah, like Chinese zodiac to me is more spot on than anything. Okay, and, here's what the documentary said. Okay, this this is what ruins it. I mean, if I, I showed it to you and you read it, you go, yeah, that's you. How would they know that? Because once this is how it started, according to this documentary, unexplained. So I'm not taking credit for yeah for for enlightening people on this right. as I learned this, um, that when you're young and we start, re- or whenever you start reading your horoscope, you start to become more like the horoscope because you're reading it every day. Like right. they had the horoscope in the paper every day and they said that people were starting to behave like their horoscope because they believed that that's what they were right. supposed to be like. Right. If they never read the horoscope. Right. So you're attracting to yourself. You're like, you're making your own destiny happen correct. with that belief. I believe that, but I don't really read the daily ones. I just look at the overview of the year and like this year the one of my husband and my husband is not a believer everything happened sort of in that way that it's predicted for the year you know things were going to be a certain way and things did happen a certain way but think of the odds so the year before if he had read the same horoscope it would have been opposite yeah you know or if it was yeah so like i i don't know i i just i'm dubious i just i don't believe it that documentary just kind of sealed it in for me have you ever seen a fortune teller or someone who i did and um uh, apparently in my last life i was a black blue singer who oh. got murdered by my pimp because oh. on the side i was a prostitute well you see now i see that it's very believable i can really see that <laughs> <laughs> i mean you are definitely reincarnated with those genes from your past yes i was at, well it was interesting because i was a blues de- <laughs> what was believable was like well i was a blues dj oh, there you go you were in the music I, industry i, I mean, a little tight yeah. oh, on the very teeniest but tiniest still bit. you know yeah, it was in your blood yeah, so that was kind of funny. And so my friend who sent me, you know, said, uh, see, see, I told you <laughs> that you were a musician in your past life. And I'm like, yeah, no. yeah, you are because you're totally a musician style in the way you dress still, you know, you're not, uh, you're sexy. You're, 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 you're a whore. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, apparently in my last life, I was a go. black female blues singer prostitute on the side. Wow. I guess I guess the, the blues did not make enough money for my previous life. I wonder if you were really hot. <laughs> but I do. And now the crazy thing is because I once upon a time was engaged to the son of a Tibetan Buddhist monk who, real deal, escaped with the Dalai Lama, friends with the Dalai oh Lama, God. was a very high Lama, started a bunch of temples, um, has books out. He's, so anyone who's a, a Tibetan Buddhist monk, fo- a Tibetan Buddhist follower would know this monk. It was very he was very famous. Really? Yeah. He was a geshe, which means you're like the highest level of teacher. Oh my goodness. Meaning you teach monks to oh, become wow. monks. You train monks to become That's monks. It's really hard to be a monk, I think. Yeah, and it's the, so a geshe is like a professor right. of theology. It's not and a geisha. No, a, a geshe. <laughs> okay. And so the geshe is the monk that trains the, you know, that is like the professor to the other monks becoming monks. Okay. Or to the young monks. Right. And, um, yeah, so they believe in reincarnation and uh, when I saw that movie, Little Buddha, the one with uh, Keanu Reeves, right. that is a true story. Oh my God. And the, the, the Rinpoche that they were looking for, the monk that they, were, that, they, that they thought that this kid was the reincarnate of, yeah. was the teacher of this ex fiancés of mine's dad. How interesting. Yes, yeah, so he's a real guy. So it's a real story. And they thought that this kid was the reincarnation of that actual that monk. That's incredible. So wow. this ex fiance of mine, his father father was the um was one of the uh, it was bernardo bertolucci movie was one of the uh consultants on the film oh my goodness and i i believe it the way they test these kids so they test them by they they take like let's say the monk was a smoker and like smoked pipes or something they would put out like 10 different pipes and then they'd put out five different or 10 different pairs of shoes and then 10 different articles of clothing and when they test to see if you're the true reincarnation of of a monk of a tibetan monk you pick out each item that you knew was yours in a past life because you knew that item and so that really happens that's how they find who the next dalai lama is going to be but i mean how do how do they know it's real i mean well because the kid will have flashbacks and be like oh these were my slippers oh my god oh this was my robe 
oh, this, and they're because ha- they're having flashbacks of like those but items. But that's the limit of proof that they need? They believe it based on that? Well, I don't know how else to prove it. It's not like you can take a blood test. No, I know. That's what I'm well, saying. Well, maybe now they can do DNA. Yeah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> but that doesn't, well, no, you're they not going to have the, the same bloodline. from the shoes. So, yeah, so they're not going to have actually have the same <laughs> bloodline That's now that I think about it. But it's really interesting. So I should believe more in reincarnation because, you know, that blows my mind what, what the monks do do to find the reincarnate and that's what they'll do the next time you know when this when this Dalai Lama passes you know they're going to have to find the reincarnate of him so really interesting stuff anyway I love well I'm a believer of reincarnation I just think it makes sense yes I I want I do but in certain times like when okay so in for whatever reason, when I learned about Buddhism, it all made sense, and I'm, I, I was, you know, taking lessons from monks, and it all made sense, and I was, you know, reading the scriptures, and all makes sense. But then I go to a fortune teller, <laughs> and I'm like, what? <laughs> I guess it is. It's more of an entertainment thing, but I mean, it is a serious industry. It is. People make a lot of money out of it because people believe. I mean, what's the difference between that and believing in your faith? I mean, it's almost based on the same thing. It's blind faith. Yeah, it, it is blind right? faith. Right? Yeah. yeah. And I just don't have a lot of blind There's faith. There's no proof of anything, really. Yeah. Know? I mean, that's why I go and get my DNA test, and yeah. I just don't have a lot of blind faith. <laughs> right. And as far as the moon thing, I mean, you say you see a difference in me, but I mean, I sleep the same. I never notice a difference. You're in the more formula. wired up and fired up. You have, and that's because of the the magnetic force. Between. I think it's just affecting you. It's making you a little bit more aggressive in a way. Whether it's good aggression or bad aggression, it could be oh! anything. That's right. <laughs> it's Howlin' Jill. <laughs> I did have a dog that was a wolf dog. She was part wolf. See, yeah. There you go. And she would sometimes howl, but it wasn't necessarily because there was a full moon. Um, but yeah, so there is a magnetic force because the 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 moon is closer, so we yeah. have a stronger gravitational they say pull. That animals are affected by it. So. Yeah, and the tide rises. So it makes sense but just because we have our water in our bodies being pulled or something i don't know how that affects my personality science thing because it's about energy i guess you know okay physics we'll find we will find out (laughs) we will find out. all of you astrophysicists i think we should interview the moon on our next segment no let's get neil degrasse tyson he (laughs) would know he does a lot of podcasts. Yeah. I don't know if he'll do us. Hey, Neil deGrasse Tyson, if you're watching this, can you please come on and come on down? Fix our debate here about whether the well, I'll I'll look it up and I'll see if I can find you saying anything about it. If not, we need you on the show. But you know how I know because I don't even know. Sometimes it's a full moon, and I'm like, why am I so oh, oh and I can't sleep, and I've got all this energy, and why must I do a million things? And then I realize at night it's a full moon. Okay, and- let me pose this. Could it be hormones? Because the moon is on a monthly cycle and, you know. It could be, but I wasn't always on the same cycle. Oh, yeah. And I still had the effect. So, uh, true. Okay. I thought about that, but no. Well, speaking of hormones, so to do I or do you, so we take a similar type of pill because we go to the same guy now. Right. Texas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dr. Snatch. Yeah. And Dr. Crack. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> I let him do the anal probe. I know. You're just like, go for any... Well, that's because of your past life. We understand oh, yeah, that for you, right. there are life. no limits. The only question I always ask him is, who pays who? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, shouldn't he be paying... Yeah, shouldn't you be paying me yeah. for that, or do I pay you extra How for that? lucky is he to get you, you know? <laughs> like, I mean, I'm, I just never know. I'm like, who, where does the extra charge come on that? <laughs> You're building my insurance? Exactly, honestly. <laughs> for that anal probe. This is the only man you pay... To have him do something, you know, there. <laughs> so now some some uh, female OBGYNs who are more naturopaths, they don't believe in doing a lot and taking birth control pills at all. I know. They're against it. They're against it. Very much so. But one of them, so I was at that longevity conference a couple right. of weeks ago. So it was about disease, fasting, and longevity. And all these researchers from different from around the world, from different, you know, labs, that, you know, these are uh, funded uh, published studies right. that are funded with grants. Right. So these are not just like people talking about their patients. Right. These are people who actually did like clinical trials. 
And one of the doctors, she uh, did not have her own clinical trials that she was referring to. She's going more by like her experience being in this industry. Her name is Felice Gersh. Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe we'll get her on the podcast. Mm. Um, And she said not to take birth control pills, but then she's a full believer in the hormone replacement therapy after. Because she says if you're trying to get pregnant, that taking pills will mess you up. But once you're past that baby bearing phase, then you should be on hormone replacement therapy once you reach menopause. Yeah, but, you know, hormone replacement therapy and the pill are basically doing the same thing. Well, that's my, that's yeah. what I thought. I'm like, what's right. the difference? You know. So I think maybe she's coming at it from a fertility thing. So now I talked to my cousin, who's an amazing OBGYN in New Jersey, mm-hmm. and I said to him, when should I go on the on the creams? Right. And he's like, well, you know, whenever you want. He goes, how are you feeling from the pill that you're taking now? I go, fine. He goes, well, then don't change anything. Right. That's what mine told me as well. Okay. Don't change it if it's working. It's basically trading four quarters for a dollar. It is? Yeah. Okay. I mean, at one point you can consider stopping it because you don't really need to take it anymore, but we do lose so much estrogen, you need to take some estrogen. Right. You know, um, this pill that I'm on is the lightest, 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 lightest dose. It's. I think you're on the same one as me. I, my, I think mine's a little, isn't mine stronger? Maybe. I'm on the low, low estrogen, which is now called menastrin. Oh, yeah, no, no, you were on the low, I'm low. I'm on the low, low. I was on There's the low, low estrogen, right. and then they changed the name to menastrin. Okay, well, I'm on the low, low, and I mean, I, I get no side effects, nothing. It's To me, it's just, I feel the same as I always felt. I feel, well, I actually feel better since I've been on that yeah, one. Yeah, better, definitely. Because, yeah, yeah. I lost my period altogether from it, which is what I wanted, because right. mine was miserable. Right. And um, and it, they put iron in it, and I used to always be a little bit low Deficient, iron. Right. But now my iron's almost a little too high. Right. So, you know how do you, how's your iron levels? I'm, everything's perfect on me. I just had my blood work done. Oh, you're done. so perfect. I know. It's perfect. Well, I'm not saying it's perfect, but I mean, it, it, nothing perfect. is out of balance right now. So, oh, okay. you know, and, and who knows? God willing, it'll stay that okay. way. <laughs> so, well, all right. Well, that's another discussion. But my, yeah. so my iron's a little bit on the high side. And you know how you can lower your iron? You donate blood. Oh, yeah. Um, there you go. Yeah. So, so maybe just donate, you just have to do some charitable stuff. So I'm going to have to donate yeah, some blood and I'll right. get my iron levels are you Are you squeamish about getting blood tests? Um, I used to be, uh, like, um, yeah, I mean, I get my, uh, I, one time, the first time I had to give blood, I had to have blood taken was my, the first surgery I ever had. I was like 21 and the woman was awful at it. Like the phlebotomist was just like, Oh, oh yeah, I can't yeah, find painful it. I can't you. find it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then and you're like, black. Oh, 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 <laughs> yeah, oh. That's pretty nasty though. And so anyway, so I had never knew I was like, that was the first time I ever had it done. Oh my God. And so then after that, I developed a fear. Yeah. I can see that from having a bad experience. I'm really not afraid of anything like yeah. that, but I think if I had an experience, definitely. Yeah. And I made that, I'm watching her and I'm like, yeah, what? <laughs> What are you doing? <laughs> Listen, my grandmother, who's in her 90s, I don't know. She had some terrible person give her. her I saw her after. She was bruised from here to here uh, because they did that. They stabbed her to death. They yeah. couldn't find a vein. Can't find it. Can't find yeah. it. Can't find I can it. never find a vein. They can never find a vein with me. Often they have to go through my hands because that's yeah. the only part that's veiny. So we also have the same GP. And yeah. so that woman who is his phlebotomist, she's amazing because I told her yeah. about my fear when I started right. going to her. Yeah. And because my palms got all sweaty. Right. Yeah. And like one time, uh, I had an injection, I had a cortisone injection in my elbow and it was so painful, oh. but I'm like, you know, big tough chick. Yeah, so you are. I'm like, so I get up and I start walking out and this was just a shot in my elbow, which was incredibly painful. Right. It was like searing pain right. until the needle came out. And I'm like, okay, thank you very much, doc. I got up, I walk out, I walk over to the counter to pay. And up next thing I knew, I just heard a crack. <gasps> I passed out on the floor, oh my cracked God. my head. No. Yeah. And about 15, 20 minutes later, I woke up in one of the patient rooms like, what happened? What? I blacked out. You're kidding. Yeah. Because I was being, I thought I was being all tough. Oh my god. And goodness. I'm like, okay, now I definitely have a fear of needles. Oh my God. <laughs> oh yeah. I would definitely have a fear if I had that. Those two things happen. So anyway, so then a few years later, I start going, or maybe 10 years later even, I start going to the same phlebotomist as you, um, and she got me over it. So now I'm fine. So now I feel like I can give blood. Yeah, she's but those two ex- gentle. Yeah, those two yeah. experiences, and I told her how bad, yeah. you know, what happened to me. Like, I didn't know I had a fear until... <laughs> well, what about the flu shot? Because when I got the flu shot once, I got the worst flu ever for a month. I was sicker than a dog. I, I mean, I would have probably been better off just getting a normal flu over this extended flu that I got from the flu shot. So I don't do them anymore. 
So I just saw in a documentary. Okay. <laughs> and I knew that I could ask Jill anything. Just saw this on a documentary. Um, there's a documentary show, and I think this one is also on Netflix. It's um, like, is there a doctor in the house or something? It's about okay. ask that like uh, these three doctors answer these questions, but they do it like in an interesting show, like a new, like a like a a news segment, but like a magazine show. It's right. Really interesting. It's really fun. So it's like something the doctor the doctor is in. I think okay. it's called. And they did one on the flu, and they said there's no possible way and I, I didn't write this question in thinking about you but someone said can you get the flu from a flu shot well that's what the doctor said he told me that you will probably get flu like symptoms for two to three days because you're actually getting a dose of the flu so your body can build an immunity against it so the doctor on the show says but it is impossible to actually get the flu from the flu shot because the flu virus that we're giving you is dead Hmm. So you can't actually get the flu because they can't multiply, but you can get some symptoms because you're getting some, right. you're getting dead flu. Well, I thought getting the flu shot, I wouldn't get a flu of any sort regardless. And I did. Yeah. Well, I was sicker that year than any other you year. You were probably already sick when you got the shot. But I got and it again and again. And I'm just like, you know, I thought it was a prevention and it made it worse. Yeah. You probably already had the flu and didn't know it. And then you got some extra flu put in you. But I swear to you that the quote, what this doctor said, word for word is, it is impossible to get the flu from the flu shot because the flu virus we're giving you and the shot is dead. Well, I heard that there are moms now that are not going to give their kids the flu shot this year. And I'm not sure of the reasons behind it, but I did hear that. So, you know, maybe there is some skepticism. Well, as I say, they think that the that flu, I mean, sorry, that um, shots might cause autism too. Right. But Well, too many because we're giving them so many. Uh, maybe just space it out. I don't yeah. know. But um, I, I mean, listen, I, maybe I'm on the spectrum, but I had all my <laughs> shots. <laughs> I mean, it's good to have shots for things that are deadly, but yeah. I mean, some things you got to let your body deal with on itself. Well, when I, we were kids, we got that seven in one booster thing. I don't know what I got. I got one shot. I have one mark on my body from a shot. I don't, it's so small. I think yeah. I got three inoculations totally. Yeah. You that know. first one you get, I forgot one, yeah. that was for like tuberculosis or TB, something. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And that leaves a scar. Right. Um, yeah. And they used to use that gun. I remember oh, yeah. seeing I what that remember. thing looked like. I don't even remember getting it. I didn't see it. I just saw a video of oh, people really? getting it after that. Right. Like, oh, that's what I got. That's what that mark is from. Right. I thought that was cool. But yeah. So, uh, I don't know. I believe in I believe in getting the sh in getting preventative shots. But are we overprotecting ourselves, and then we're becoming a lot much more vulnerable, and we need more? No, because the flu and other viruses they morph. That's why we get super viruses. But are they morphing because we're building up such an antibody, so they're becoming stronger? They're getting smart. Yeah, we are. But right. if you have to go to work. <laughs> yeah you fucked well when you go to school and you're a kid i mean you look we grew up without having all these things you know we didn't have flu shots and all that that's true we just you know we ate dirt from the ground and, and flu <laughs> and flu but flus have gotten worse and, and they we have more have all these allergy things that kids have today i mean you know you know everybody ate everybody else's lunch and true. you know but flus but the those viruses have morphed and yeah so it's a really scary thing so no we should not uh, we shouldn't take a ton of antibiotics because antibiotics are killing these viruses. But um, as far as the flu goes, I think if you can prevent yourself, you know, they can never get all of the flus that you're going to get right. in one shot. So I think, you know, just trying to at least not maybe get six of the strains right. going around. Yeah. You know, there might be eight going around. All right. So there's a chance I might get two of the ones that are floating right. about. Yeah. But at least I'm immune to six. Right. So I don't think that that's nearly as bad as like these other uh, strains like um, uh, a sepsis and what's the, what's the one um, that's the Flushing virus, the oh Ebola, Ebola, and then that's there's very not E. coli, right Ebola. Yeah. E. coli's well, in your salad. Right, the salad one, right. Yeah, that's, that's different. That's the one I'm saying has become very rampant. Like you're hearing about these cases all the time lately. Well, that's that. totally different. That's something that's in your in, right. in food. Right. That's a food poisoning. Right. And Ebola is the flesh-eating virus. Right, that's terrible. <laughs> yeah. So they're trying to have a vaccine for that. But uh, what's the... Um, no, but I'm just saying strep. for the lettuce thing, why is it happening so often all of a sudden, you know, in your food? Like I know it's coming from something that... Maybe there's manure that's been left on the lettuce leaves. Yeah, or, it's usually you know, what it's, it's from, like right. animals running around and pooping in yeah. your salad. But why are we hearing about it so much more today than we did like 30 years ago? That's what I'm saying. I don't know. I'm, I, I, or did we not know 30 years ago as much as we do today? Or is it because of technology that we hear about everything every day, 24 hours a day? I don't know. You know, but all are I know, we over-informed? 
<laughs> I, I that's a good question. I really yeah. don't know. But all I know is that yeah, we know that we have these super strains, right. these super viruses right. that are becoming resistant. Absolutely, resistance to shots, and they're getting stronger and morphing. Well, that is the balance of Mother Nature because Mother Nature, in the end, always prevails. <laughs> yeah, you know that's how come you know things don't really go away. They just become something else. Right, exactly. In so they're cases. so they're morphing. Right. And so that's the problem with taking too many antibiotics because every time you take an antibiotic, Absolutely. you're trying to kill something that's already in you. So this right. is here's the rub or the difference, I should say, that when we're taking an antibiotic, we're trying to kill something we already have and it dies and it's like f you, I'm right. coming back stronger. Right. Exactly. Right? I'm coming back stronger. That's it. But when we get a vaccine, that's just to prevent it from getting it in the first place. So this I think there's a night and day difference. I'm right. all about the vaccine and i'm not all about the antibiotic I just think we're over vaccinating i just i'm a believer like shouldn't we just maybe they do that now but at one point they were giving kids like 10 at one time like maybe now they're spreading them out a little more like don't you have to see first of all like maybe? i don't know am i okay i had like seven at once <laughs> you did yeah. i'm telling you my whole life i've had three and my cousins were my pediatricians you're kidding yeah i just got my booster shots and yeah i was fine oh my goodness no yeah. My parents. I mean, maybe much, I'm autistic. I don't know. You, you well, something's wrong with I you. Might, clearly, I might. <laughs> it's clear. I do have. I do. There's something's there's a, wrong with all of us, though. I mean, yeah. you know, there is one one of the uh, one one of the things on the spectrum of autism is having that weird mouth feel. I always had that. I didn't get over that till like my 20s. Like I couldn't mix, like I couldn't eat Rocky Road ice cream. This what? is something like autistic kids have. You're kidding. Um, no, and I have that. that one. It was one, I have one of those, um, they have whatever it is, it's like a spectrum of like eight or nine or 10. I'm not an expert on it. My One of my best friends is, but there, so I can ask, we can ask Nancy, but there's like whatever the eight or 10 things that, uh, a criteria that, that puts you on a certain spectrum of autism. Mm -hmm. And I definitely have at least one of those. Yeah. Mouthfeel. So I could, when I was a kid, I couldn't eat peanut butter and jelly because it's two different mouthfeels. One is squishy and one is like creamy. And what happens if you do? I just, uh, like I get, I feel creepy crawly. Like I feel like my skin would be crawly. You're kidding. I couldn't eat Rocky Road ice cream because it was like marshmallow things and then smooth things and then chunky things. And, and I was like, today? Ugh, I'm fine now. I outgrew it. Oh my goodness. But yeah, I had that for until my 20s. I didn't eat peanut butter and jelly. I never heard of that, to be I honest. I didn't eat peanut you. butter and jelly till I was like You're 18 years old. I never heard of together. that. Together. I would eat a jelly sandwich or I would eat a peanut butter sandwich. Separately, but yeah, not but together. I couldn't eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. That is very I bizarre. Not eat, very couldn't bizarre. eat Rocky Road ice cream and I would not eat sprinkles on my ice cream. Well, I feel like that about hard boiled eggs. It, the mouth feel? Yeah. Because it's two it consistencies. Just, it, I, I feel like I'm going to vomit if I put that in my mouth. Yeah, it was too... Well, I would have to eat the... <laughs> I would have to eat the white first. Yeah, I can't. By itself. Yeah. And then I would have to eat the yolk if I was eating the yolk. I then just I would can't eat the yolk. I can eat the white. Yeah. So And I can eat eggs any other way. Yeah, it's very chalky. But uh, yeah, so I would mostly eat the whites as a kid. But if I was really hungry and I wanted both, I could not eat them together because of the mouth feel. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. So I could be. Maybe those shots, maybe there is something well, to that. Well, you know, my parents were so natural raising me. They believed less is more. That was their whole philosophy. Yeah. And so they didn't want to overdo anything. And they always thought that, you know, something's going to come out years later about how it isn't good for you. So they just tried to do everything very naturally, maybe too much naturally. Because I'm much more of a hypochondriac today than I was compared to how I was brought up. I was brought up totally like, you didn't take anything for anything. You just suffered through it. Uh -huh. Unless it was dire, dire. Like I had appendicitis. Okay, we're going to go to the hospital, you know? Yeah, but your it, mom was like the hippy dippy person she, well yeah, before that was yeah, ever a thing. Right. Yeah. Well, she she should have like, yeah. She should have lived in San Francisco. She definitely should. She would have loved that. Such the hippy yeah. dippy. And my mom was like, well, if it comes in a pill. Yeah, my mom was <laughs> like, there were no pills in the house. If there was a pill for it, that's what we take. So my mom over medicated me with um, antibiotics. So I actually, by the time I grew up and moved to LA in my early 20s, I had zero, I had zero immune system because oh I had been God. on so many antibiotics no growing up. No, we had aspirin. That was the biggest pill we had in our house besides my mother's migraine meds which she never took uh -huh. or rarely took but that was it uh -huh. there were no pills in the house our medicine cabinets were empty yeah i didn't even <laughs> i didn't i had no idea that it was abnormal to take so many antibiotics so all i knew is my skin looked better when i took them oh so, yeah well that's so true. i thought yeah. antibiotics were great you know <laughs> pop my gamma yeah exactly <laughs> they great skincare me, plan it was my skin was so clear every time that's i took true. them so uh i didn't know how much damage i was doing and then my cousins told me and at this point um now i'm like 29 30 years old 
and they told me, you know, about the problem with taking too many antibiotics and how my mom had given me way too many and I should really stop it. And when I moved, and that was when I was 29, 30, but like about seven years before that, I moved to LA and I started meeting all these like natural hippie dippy people like your mom who are like, you're messing yourself up and yet everything you've got to do natural antifungals and natural antivirals. And I'm like, what? What yeah. is what is this natural I know. stuff? My mother used to put in spray bottles vinegar and water. To, you know, she didn't want to buy anything chemical. Oh, my mom sprayed Lysol on my face. <laughs> yeah, She's like, know. you're sick? <laughs> you know what? Who's Lysol on the wrong? face? Because you're very healthy and I'm very healthy. And we mm. both come from different backgrounds. I, so. well, I had to fix it. I had to really change. I made, you know, my life made a complete 180. I moved out to L.A. and I just started making that complete, you know, U-turn. In, in how I live my life. Right. But I, you know, I was completely ignorant. I, you know, my mom was a hypochondriac. Seriously, Lysol in the face. If I coughed or sneezed, Lysol oh in the face. God. Like, <laughs> that is so bad. No kidding. She poisoned you. So it totally did. Well, that makes you a little toxic. I could see that. Oh my God. Tell- <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I have had to do a lot of detoxing of my body. Oh my God. Yeah. Poor baby. So, you know, we didn't talk about last time. What's that? Vaginal dryness. No, oh. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's an upbeat conversation. You told me about to, yeah, well, we, <laughs> well, Jim was just here helping us set up our new lights. We have new lights now. Yeah. And uh, so, oh, and if people listen to the previous episode, everything's fine now. Jim and I made up. And he Yay. now appreciates that I went through such great pains to help his cholesterol issue. And I made all custom food for this party. Which and turned out delicious. Turned out delicious and nobody minded. So if you listen to the last episode, everything turned out perfectly and I was the hero of the day. Yes. <laughs> I win. <laughs> and that's all that matters. You didn't really win. We met halfway. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, I, I win in the fact that everyone was appreciative that that's I brought good. this food. I'm glad. There were yeah. some vegans there. Right. And so it wound up being like... Yeah, because like I told you, I could bring sometimes just the pie or something and I get dirty looks like, well, why'd you bring that? You don't think we have enough food? Or, you know, so I just stick to the bottle of wine. Yeah. No one seems to be bothered by that. Yeah, so if you listen to the previous episode, we talked about, is it rude to go to a party and you know bring extra dishes because it's Without something... Without asking. Yeah, if it... Well, we told them. Okay. But... Well, there you go. They were just afraid that there wasn't going to be enough room on the table for food. So. Or in their fridge to yeah. store it, you know. But my food was so freaking good. Oh, good. Everyone was like, oh, awesome. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll definitely invite you to a party. You can always cook half the meal like you do. I always... I, I always love do- that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I there's, sharing. there's a couple of things I love to make. So okay. we'll we'll be doing some recipe yes. segments for the show. Right. And yeah, we'll do it in your kitchen because yours is bigger than mine. And um, yeah, so that's really great. What I lost my train of thought. Oh, we we're talking about vaginal dryness. KY jelly. Yeah. So <laughs> and Jim. <laughs> so uh, Jim, one day we're gonna have sex. It was God, I, I forgot how long ago it was now. <laughs> 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 Yeah, we've been having a little stress. Anyway, um, that's not good. <laughs> so he so he grabs a jar of of Trader Joe's coconut oil. I'm like, what are you doing? Oh, cold press. I'm gonna hope. gonna lube <laughs> gonna lube things up. With oh the, my god! With the Trader, Joe's. I'm like, I use that for cooking. What are you doing? Like a yeast infection from that or something? As it turns out, so then I'm like, no, no, no. Let's use. He goes, well, I don't like yours. Which is this um, silicone, silicone-based um, KY stuff that's like very slippery water. It's water. Well, no, it's actually water-based, and it's supposed to feel like silicone, hmm. which I got from the pleasure chest years ago. I got a big, giant, honking bottle. Oh you know, the family size. <laughs> The Costco size, <laughs> the family orgy size. <laughs> oh my god! Again, we go back to her past life. So we understand. <laughs> and the orgy size. Right. So it lasts for years. <laughs> I'm surprised it lasts. So he years. grabs the he, he grabs the coconut oil. I grab the KY, and I'm like, use this. He's like, no, that gets sticky. And I'm like, well, that's because you know this is the water-based version. So eventually, it wears off and gets you know it gets sticky at the end. He goes, well, let's use the let's use the um, coconut oil and I'm like but then I, I smell like I'm, I'm at the beach I don't want my my cooch smelling well, like it tastes great 
I get well. Right. That's that's there an interesting go. point. There you go. I guess if he likes <laughs> the taste of the coconut, oil, I personally do not enjoy the taste of coconut oil unless it's in my coffee. Really? Yeah, weird. Oh, I know. Sometimes I'm, I take a spoon of it. I like it. Yeah, I don't. Oh. So cooking with it is fine, and putting it in my coffee is interesting. It was something a little I learned, you know, from Bulletproof Coffee. That's another topic when I was experimenting with ketogenic diets, and uh, but I had not thought of using that as a lubricant. Well, yeah, and some people are actually telling me they're mixing it with their moisturizers in the winter. Oh, yeah. You know, to make it more so your skin is not as dry. Right. And yeah, yeah Jim uses it as his body lotion. Yeah. And it's, you know, fine. I wouldn't put it directly on, but I'd probably mix it with my, you know. But it's like you, you smell like Hawaiian Tropic. Yeah, but that's a nice smell. Those are good memories <laughs> smelling like that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so I just thought it was a little bit weird for lube. And I was like, oh. Well, that's like you'd get infected from oh, that. Oh, there. Oh, right. there. Hold up there. Turbo. <laughs> anyway, so then the next day. Um, I'm training one of my clients and she just had a baby and she goes, last night was the first night we had sex since the baby was born. Woo. And I said, I said, you know, how was the moisture? She was oh. No, she was like, well, Mark, her husband, she's like, could have gone for, you know, hours and hours. So she goes, we had to stop and grab the coconut oil. I'm like, what now? I just what 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 did I you grab? I am so sensitive to anything that if it's not unscented and pure, I cannot put anything in that area. Well, I, so I I said, what, you, what the coconut oil? She goes, yeah yeah, we use coconut oil, don't you? And I'm like, well, Jim, that's so funny. You should say that. Jim just tried to use the coconut oil last night. Okay. Were your were the men conversing with each other that I didn't <laughs> know about? And I was like, well, I, for so for a second, I thought that this is like a practical joke, like that Jim set her up to say that to right. me. For a second, I'm like, you know, I don't trust anything. So I'm like, hmm. And then, nope, you know, she's vegan. (laughs) Not that that has anything to do with anything. But they use coconut oil and she goes, you know, it is antifungal. So my, she said her really? her gynecologist, oh. her gyno, told her to use coconut oil. Would it work on your toenails? I don't know that that's a gynecologist specialty. Not a gynecologist specialty, but if it's antifungal, you and sometimes you get, you know, under your nail, you can get a little fungus. Well, I'm going to see my skin doctor. I'll ask him because yeah. uh, I think I have a cancer here. I don't think it's a cancer. I feel like it might be. I think you're just now you're focusing on something because you're obsessed with it. I have a little spot here that kind of got a little bit. It, it used to be flat. It was a little discolored. It doesn't, kind I of, can't it's, see it. There's no it's a tiny. It looks like a tiny, tiny, tiny kidney bean. And yeah. the, and it was just it was a little bit off color, like a little darker than skin, mm. um, and a little peachy, a little pink, yeah. And then it started to get a little fluffy, and I'm like, okay, going to the it's doctor. It's not even noticeable. I don't even. And see then it. it shrunk again. But you know, those cancer things are supposed to like morph. Well, you know what happens with the cancer things is they grow big underneath the skin and they show up very small on the top. Yeah. Well, Jim had a big hunk. They get roots. Like- and Jim had <laughs> a big hunk taken out. Yeah. So anyway, I mean, if I have to get it taken off, I'm going to do it now before it gets any bigger. Oh, absolutely. So it's amazing you could notice that because I've got tons of things on. I don't notice anything. I had it checked out. Yeah. And I only go every, I mean, I, I should go every year, but I skipped last year and then sometime between two years ago and now. So yeah, so it looks like a little kidney bean. And uh, yes, yeah, so I'm going to have them check. Well, you out. know where they also say to check is in between your toes and places you wouldn't oh, think yeah. of. Because people often will get things that start in places they don't expect it to. They always think it's the most exposed places. But I had a friend who had one under her foot. And it ended up becoming a really big problem because they had to dig deep in the foot for a little thing that was, you know, when you lie in the sun and you're on your stomach, you don't think of your feet. Right. You're putting your stuff all over your body, but you're not putting it on your feet normally. Oh, I don't think my doctor ever checked my feet. That's interesting. So they said to check your feet and behind your ears on the top because, you know, your son, when you're wearing a ponytail, often we don't put our SPF there. We don't think of our ears and behind our ears. Right, right. So those are the places that you have to be careful with. And even between your hair follicles on your scalp, especially men, if they're thinning hair, they have to check that. Good tip. Yeah. Yeah. So those are the little secret places that people don't think of. I just I just had a visualization of men who are partially or to completely bald <laughs> with liver spots on their heads. Right. That was a Yeah. That was not a pleasant thought just no, now. No, no, it's not a pleasant <laughs> thought. It's a scary thought and because, you know, it's more rampant than ever today. And did you know you get more cancers on the left side of your face? Why? Because when you drive, the sun is coming in through the window on the driver's now, side is on is the left. this is a question I always had. They always say that your your windows in your car are treated for for uh, UV rays. 
Yeah, but there's more than one UV ray. So is it UVA, UVB? Right, no, for the ones that are harmful, the damaging ones. Mm, I don't know. But you know, that really makes sense because some women that I used to know and I used to laugh at my girlfriend's mothers, they used to drive with gloves in the summer right. and scarves around their neck. Yeah. Because they said that the, the from the car... Yeah. So I don't know how well the window tints work. Right. But um, yeah, you definitely get more on the left side. Oh my God. Because that's the side that's hitting you from. Oh. Yeah. So wear more sunscreen on your left definitely. side than your right side. And please don't, bu- don't, don't drive a convertible like I did. You know, I moved to LA and of course I had to have the convertible right. and you know, of course. And fast forward, you regret it. So I can't drive a convertible because my hair is very fine. Okay. And one of the things that drives me completely bonkers is when my hair is like like little hairs are touching my face, like tickling oh, yeah. my face. You have to put it back in a ponytail. But even when I put it as I still have a few okay. like hairs. Drives you crazy? Nuts. Oh, Out yeah. of my mind. Right. I mean, I, like I want to scream. It's like, you know, nails on a chalk, chalkboard for me. Yeah. For my those little hairs to be like touching my face while the windows are down. Because I never use my sunroof. I always get a sunroof. Right. I never I use my too. sunroof. Neither do I. Drives my hair crazy. Right. But what are you going to do about your spot? When are you getting that checked? Wednesday. Okay, so you'll let us know. Right before we shoot our next podcast. Right. Vodcast, podcast. Are you nervous about it? Um, you know, I've been very lucky with skin cancer because, you know, my, my, I got the, I inherited the darker skin of the family. Right. So I've been lucky. That's very good. Yeah. You're like, protected. My dad, um, never had, uh, son had never had cancer on his skin. My sister never, I don't think she ever had cancer on her skin. My, uh, grandfather on my mom's side had one on his back that he had taken off. Oh boy. Uh, and. But maybe the sun wasn't as strong back then as it is today true, so true. you know because i know my grandmother she has she has pale skin but she has an olive you know uh genetic so she's got some olive to her skin and she used to put oil on it and she never had anything yeah well genetics are the number one predeterminant right. you know what they say in genetics and epigenetics is that your genetics loads the gun the epigenetics pulls the right. trigger so exactly depends she might not she lives in canada your grandmother yeah. so she might not have been in as much sun as like me or people who well they even believed in those days that you needed sun made made, made you healthy you needed it you needed yeah, to but be brown might- otherwise you weren't healthy looking Right. Yeah, that's true. (laughs) Yeah. We had my, my father and my, and my mom, my mom didn't tan. She just burned and got freckly. My mom, but my father used to use, remember those, they were the three way, um, reflective thing. Like on something about Mary. Yes. On something about Mary. My my dad actually used one and my mom actually (laughs) used one. I mean, I was just, you know, I was a kid. So I was like, I tried to just like look cool, but it was just too much to, (laughs) I'm like, how do you sit here and just hold this thing? I want to take a nap. Time right. to go in the pool. Right. It's like, uh, my dad gets tanned. My mom would burn. So she'd always be in the shade. And for someone who was always in the shade and just had maybe her toes stick out, she's the one that ended up getting a cancer. Your mom? Yeah. Oh, wow. And she always wore, I mean, she was like putting SPF since I was a kid. Oh, so she Bef- knew. No, yeah. she knew. And she would stay out of the sun like crazy. And then she ended up having one on her leg, which she never exposed in the sun. Her skin was whiter than white. Same thing with my maternal yeah. grandmother was like that because right. she was very, very alabaster. And so she always stayed out of the sun. And I think she had one little something on her calf. Oh, sorry, on her shin. Right. Uh, yeah, because... Right, I think she had that taken yeah, off. Yeah, she had to have it cut out. It was yeah. like a big thing. I think my grandmother's was small, but she just like right. never went in the sun again. Yeah. Interesting. So another topic we didn't get around to last week that we said we were going to discuss were products we love. Like, what are we loving on right now? Well, I think you're loving that coconut oil. <laughs> I don't know. I'll give it. I'll. I'll give we it a shot. Really talk about that full circle on that, and you know, using it as lube and what else re- to use down there. I will report back next week. Yeah, because I go for the. I go for the water based silicone feel, silicone feeling right. KY right family size. <laughs> <laughs> that must last you a week, actually. I don't know. No, I wish. It, that So far, how long have Jim and I been together? Eight years? It's lasted eight years. Wow. That's not saying much We're either. at the bottom now. Yeah. We're at the bottom now. That's not saying much. <laughs> Um, yeah, well, oh, one of my favorite, the, yeah, so I think we got it when we bought my favorite vibrator. 
Oh, well, there we go. More That's information. Enough. Enough. We'll talk about that yeah. next time. So uh, what are some of our favorite products? We didn't get around to talking about things that we're loving right now. What are you loving right now? Anything in particular? Um, yeah, Zara. I went to uh, an event because you were not available. I was your husband's right. surrogate date. Right. <laughs> and I wore um, a Halston dress. Right. And with some side boob showing because I did the side boob because you showed me this Instagram girl walking down the street, super sexy, but you said she was like classy, not slutty looking. That's but right. But she had all the side boob showing. Yeah, but she had I'm nice like, boobs. You have nice boobs. You can get away with side boob when you have nice boobs as long as you're not trying to look trashy. And that, that's going back to age appropriate dressing. Yeah. I was not trying to look trashy, right. but this dress, cause you know, the, that, that dress is halter. So some side boob right. shows and some guys think that that's very sexy and I do not like it. I like it to fit me right. But then I saw that video of that girl and right. I'm like, and you said it was hot. So yeah. I'm like, well, Tata is my wardrobe, <laughs> you know, guru. So well, if she says side boob is hot, body for it, and it has to be a certain side, not a lot of side boob, a little bit. I wasn't falling out of it. Right. I'm just saying, but you saw some yeah, side boob, right? And um, yeah, so whatever. So well, I did if that. Your boobs are nice and firm. That's okay. And I wore it with these thigh high boots from Zara that I got a million compliments on. Wow. That were like 110 bucks or 120 I know, bucks, it's really crazy, right? And they are so comfortable. I could wear them all night. Oh, nice. And they had nice block heel, oh. and they're like this knit fabric, and they and they're so they're stretchy, elastic That's knit great. kind of thing. Yeah. Over the thigh, and so big money saver, and I can wear it all winter. And then if they're not in fashion next year, boom. Yeah. So I'm loving those from Zara, right. and then I got a fake fur, a faux fur jacket from them, that is just I I love. So, it, well, I think that's the thing. The idea with, you know, buying things like that where we call it disposable fashion, which means you don't expect to keep it forever. Right. It's not a designer piece. Right. Luxury is something you want to keep for a long time. So it's an investment piece. When you're going to Zara, you wear it for a season and you trash it, which you can do. It's affordable. Um, and I think that's a great way because you're wearing a beautiful Halston dress, which is your designer or your you know, luxury piece. And then you're putting Zara accessories. It's yeah. very cool. Yeah, it worked great. And then that little faux fur, um, like it looked like a mink. It was really cute. It flares out a little bit like an A-line. Oh, that's so cute. Yeah, it was an A-line with a hood. It was really oh, cute. So, so cute. I was super happy with that. Um, what about you? Something you love? Well, you know, I've been... I've been working in an office job for so many years, always having to get dressed up day in and day out. And I'm finally, you know, now I'm working sort of part time and I'm sort of changing my path in my career in life. And I'm really enjoying wearing my aloe leggings. Like I'm just getting back into the legging world and wearing like athleisure wear. So I'm really loving my aloe stuff, um, getting a lot of use out of it. And it's really fun because it's super comfortable and it looks good and it yeah. fits good. I love their fabrics. I right. love their cuts, the way they fit. I'm tall, so they're never short on me. Right. And even people that are shorter, they fit really nice. And their fabrics aren't like overly heavy and they have um, a lot of assortment. And who turned you on to aloe? Who turned me on to aloe? Mm. Mademoiselle. Mm. Who let do think, you let think? Let me think, let me think. That's right, because she bought me last Christmas a little... Um, I got you the motos when they came out. The motos. The that's ladies, right. No, yeah. and you got me the lace ones, the Yeah, straps. yeah. Oh, first I got you the lace yeah. ones, because those were coming back. They still, still make them. They still make them. And so. that's another good thing about aloe, is it never really, you know, things last. There's longevity there. Yeah. You wear them, you wear them out, and they still have them, if you that's love them. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, so if you haven't checked out aloe yoga yeah. for your athleisure, right. the moto pants you can you know, totally wear out i mean people wear them all day long they go I to the gym do, in the morning yeah. and then they wear them wear them out so and those like, are such great travel pieces because they're comfortable to travel in and like you said if you're wearing the moto leggings and you're on a flight and then you have to go to a dinner you can still wear them and just dress them up a little bit they're really nice totally yeah yeah, yeah. so i love i love aloe too yeah. um but i have to do so for those of you fine-tuned females who do a lot of like spinning and stuff they're not great for like spinning classes because they do get too wet right because they're they're a little bit they're like a yeah, i don't do spinning i don't know they're like a lycra knit right so they're i can use them for my boot camps they're fine for yoga because obviously they're made for yoga right um and just general workouts but i don't i don't really like them for spinning because they get a little they get really wet and when they get really wet if you if you spin hard then they get a little bit saggy so what do you think oh that's not good yeah. what do you suggest to use for spinning what brands well, if you do cycling classes, anything that's a quick dry. So, you know, Nike works well for cycling Nike. classes. Yeah. Um, there's a brand I use called Terez, which are just plain old Lycra. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and so, so some people, they, they don't really breathe so much, so, but they dry fast. So anything, what you want to wear is a dry fit fabric. Right. Which I like Nike because their technology is really great. It could be Nike. Yeah. It could be Adidas. Right. I really love 2XU. Okay. Um, I haven't tried those. Yeah. Which is compression tight. Right. So those feel amazing. Right. So any, any product that dries fast. Wow. But if it's got a lot of knit in it and you're a big sweater, I don't mean sweater like your shirt. I mean right. sweater. Sweater. Sweaty person. Perspiration. Yes. yes. Right. If you're a big perspirer all over your body <laughs> yeah. like I am, right. then, uh, yeah, the aloe is not the best for spinning. Okay. Well, you know, I think that compression, you brought up the compression. Um, when you're traveling in an airplane, <sighs> uh, obviously by air, it's good to wear compression. It stops you from getting broken veins. It stops yeah. you from swelling up. So, yeah. you know, it's good to wear compression. It may not be the most comfortable, but, you know... It's very good to wear. Well, the leggings from 2XU are, but they look like workout pants. I mean, they look like, you know, Nikes. They're shiny. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. And, but I'm saying, I don't think you'd want to wear them, unless you're wearing them with sneakers and a t-shirt. Well, that's it. You wear it with a hoodie, a sneaker, yeah. and a t-shirt. Yeah. If you're going for the full yeah. on, like, I'm running to the gym right after yeah. I get off this flight. Right. <laughs> well, no. And I travel now in leggings more, like, you know, because I used to wear denim sometimes. It's not comfortable. Oh, I feel me, yeah. very comfortable in my leggings. I throw on a big oversized hoodie, t-shirt, sneakers, or booties, and I'm done. That's always Same how I on. travel. Right. Yeah, I travel in my workout clothes. Well, you know, years ago, and I'm going way back, like maybe 25, 30, people dressed up to travel. It was like, uh, it was an event. Yes. In a way. Well, when I was single, I did too. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, you know. <laughs> Never know who you're going to meet. Traveling for work, you you know, you'd have to go right off the plane and go somewhere. So you had to be dressed up. It's so uncomfortable. Oh, uh, well, when I traveled for work, I was traveling to a fitness convention. So you were. Or t- <laughs> so I was in my workout right. clothes because I was getting, right. I was going straight to a gym or a studio or a or a conference right. so I always wore uh, workout clothes but if I was traveling for you know vacation or to visit family when I was single I would get dressed because you never know who you're going to meet might be a hot pilot right <laughs> but you know what guys always go for the girls when they look more natural tend they get a little bit intimidated if you look too perfect well I wasn't wearing like heels or no, anything right. you know what I mean but yeah. I, I wasn't wearing workout no, clothes no right I got you yeah right but now, yeah, I only wear it. So athleisure, but one of the reasons I honestly love LA is because this is where athleisure lives. It's true. Like my, my friends in New York who are fashionistas, they're like, oh God, why? They, we're walking down the sh- I was walking down the street with one of my friends who was in the fashion world right. for a while. And, she, and every time she saw a girl walk by in yoga pants, she's like, oh, how can they? <laughs> and I'm like... What do you mean? Yeah, exactly. How can they not? Yeah, exactly. You're walking around Manhattan. It's like, you know, walk up and down the city streets. you got to be comfortable. Right. Well, definitely. I mean, athleisure is a great trend. I mean, I think it's becoming more and more wearable from night to day. And for workouts, uh, women are wearing that. More. I hope it never goes away. I don't think it will. I think it'll grow. Speaking of, I'm wearing carbon 38 pants, and these are a little bit um, compression-y. Um, and so these are nice leggings, and you can wear these with anything. And I, I should probably just mention that uh, if you have never gone to carbon 38 before, I just I just remembered that I have a discount code. Right, it's great. Yeah, if you use Jill Brown 50, right. you'll get uh, $25 off every $100 that you spend on your first purchase. Right. First purchase. But that is the place to get, because you've ordered a lot right. from I have- Carbon 38. Have. You turned me on to it, and they carry all you, the greatest brands. And I bought you that amazing jacket. Right, oh. the one with the leather. With and the leather the, sleeves. Yeah, amazing. I love it. It's amazing. And, you know, you can use your code JillBrown50, and you get the discount, and it's really worth it. Because yeah, buy a ton of stuff yeah. the first time because you only get to use the yeah, code once. Yeah, you get once. to use it one time. That's the damn. But. Or if you see something else, then have a friend right. order for you. Yeah. And put it all in the same order. <laughs> There's sneaky ways. Yeah, yeah, but seriously, they have they have stuff that you can wear to work, that you can wear to the gym, that you can wear for traveling. I mean, so it's full-on athleisure Absolutely. wear that is not just workout clothes. Right. Like jackets you'll wear wherever. Like Aloe always has their um, logo pretty much on everything. That's the only thing. You know, yeah. I wish that logo wasn't so noticeable on their jackets. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And on the leggings, it's like on the right, leggings right there. So you have so to wear high boots. You have to wear high boots, otherwise you can't really wear your leggings. You That's know. right. Yeah, but with Carbon Thirty Eight, some of their brands, um, they don't show the logo. Yeah. Like I don't have the logo anywhere on here that you no, can see. No, fantastic. Yeah, the logo is a little um, placard in black, right. so it matches the clothing. And so. right now, you know, with the high waisted leggings, it's really good because it kind of holds everything too. So oh, those Takaras. Yeah. We both got Takaras. Takaras the are shiny beautiful. ones. They look like leather. You can wear them for working out. Yes. They're light and really really comfy like liquid leggings and yes. you can yeah they're like liquid leggings right. and then you can also wear them out and that's carbon right. 38's own brand too yeah. takara oh yeah. 
Those are amazing. Yeah. I was going to wear those last night oh, yeah. to the uh, dinner party. And then Jim said, too sexy. Too sexy. <laughs> it's a holiday. <laughs> yeah. So I didn't. Anyway. Yeah. All right. So we'll think about topics for our next episode. Absolutely. Our next episode. And we'll have more information on fashion and some things that we want to talk about that we love. Yeah. Yeah. And so tell us the things you love because we'd love to hear that. Yeah, share your favorite brands of things that you wear. Um, what athlete? Do you do athleisure? Right. Do you walk around in athleisure wear? Yeah, because or is I that mean, a faux pas? Right. Do you live somewhere where it's not cool? Right, and I think the East Coast was always dressier for me too. It, yeah, it you was. You know, like when I was back in Canada, even in Montreal, I all of a sudden I find I accessorize more. I come back here, I'm like, my jewelry goes in a box. I'm like, forget it. Totally. <laughs> I mean, I love the casual thing yeah. about life. So let us know where you live and if athleisure is a cool thing or not. And, you know, what kind of lubricant you use. <laughs> yeah. If you want to share. And Listen, if you need it. We're women over 40. One thing about being over 40 is no excuses. I don't give a crap anymore. Good for you. Right? Way I don't go. know. You want to know something? Ask me. I'll tell you. Yeah, to hell with everything. We have nothing to hide anymore. Nothing We've to done hide. We've seen it all. And you know what? Big deal. Yeah. And then we'll be talking. I'm going to get that like uh, that uh, silhouette lift. And we'll oh, talk yeah. about that. I'm wow. super excited. I'm super excited to I'll see I'll show the you my, yeah, I'll show you the little pin pricks yeah. where they stick it in. The the thread lift or the silhouette lift, they yeah, call it. I think it'll look great. I'm excited. You know? Yeah. It's a great technology because it's collagen threads, right? Yes. No, my so. friend wants to try that. So yeah. So if you don't know what we're talking about, I'm getting it done next week. Um, it's called the silhouette Lift, lift or the lift. or the thread lift, right. yeah. So check that out. It's like a new thing. It helps it helps remove jowls, and it's pretty natural. Yeah, it's just like if you're going to get your you know injections or whatever. It's a treatment that you do, and you know you can walk out of there and go have dinner. It's uh, you know maybe an hour or two of swelling, and then you're done. Well, they're giving me an Ativan. Oh, they are. Oh yeah. my goodness! Who and I'm like, kidding? when they offered it to me, I'm like, Ativan. Well, I, I like, I like Ativan. Do you take anything like when you have to get like injectables? If you do injectables, no, just the lidocaine. Lidocaine. Yeah. Do you ever do it without a lidocaine? Have you ever tried it? One time, the first doctor you referred me to for right. Botox, right. he just iced my forehead. Yeah. And we put in a little bit of Botox, and it was fine. It's fine, right? Yeah. So, yeah. The, but he like iced me, iced me. But I don't like ice. I'd rather have the lidocaine. Lidocaine. Yeah. And I happened to go to a friend's house. I have a friend who's a plastic surgeon. He's an old friend, so we hang out, we chat, we catch up, we talk trash about our friends. See, the only thing <laughs> about <laughs> the only thing about the lidocaine is that my doctor just told me the one that we're going to now is that lidocaine smooths out your face a little, so you see less of the wrinkles when you're doing the injection. So you might not get all the wrinkles. Oh well, which I did not know. Mickey makes me do things with my eyes, so he yeah, can find they do, where they are. But okay. they still like the small fine creases that you might want to get. Uh, they they sort of get a little bit. I don't know what happens to them, but the lidocaine affects that. So are you not using it anymore? Well, what I do is I have him look before he puts it on, so uh, he remembers exactly where, you know, oh, okay. for those side creases on my eyes or like crinkly areas. Okay. Yeah, because sometimes I'll when I used to do lidocaine, I'd go home, and then a few days later, I'm like, oh, uh, you know, okay, you didn't get that, you didn't get this. That's I have to another go back really touch up. Yeah. Another really good ta ta tip. Yeah, it's a ta ta tip. So <laughs> you know, the ta ta tip of the there week. Is the benefit of the ice is that doesn't happen. Ah, okay. Right. So a lot of doctors would prefer to ice it so that they could get more, uh, you know. Got it. That makes total sense. Yeah. All right. Well, no, I'm going to, they said I could take some Advan. They ordered it for me. Mm. And Sounds like a good time. Yeah. So <laughs> I'll take some Advan and, and a painkiller. They said an Advan and a painkiller. And then never take Advil though. No. If you take Advil, you'll bruise like crazy. No, they asked me, they said, do you want to take an Advan and a painkiller? And I'm like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. And a Cosmo Baldwin with all that. Why not? <laughs> so, I mean, I didn't think that I was going to take anything. I thought it was just going to be lidocaine. Right. So I'm like, all right. Well, yeah. It'll be fine. Yeah. Well, yeah. they're going to inject you anyway. Oh, they are too? Oh, yeah. oh, so I won't feel a thing. You will feel nothing. That's cool. Right. Yeah, and I'm going to be so tired. Or the reason why I booked it at the time of day that I booked it is when I'm usually like out cold for a nap. Yeah. So I booked it specifically during my nap time. Wow. I'm so tired on at that time of day on Monday. So yeah, so we'll I'll show that to you next week. Can't wait to see that. That's yeah. exciting. All right, the thread left. Yay! Psyched. All right, <laughs> so our fine-tuned female friends, we will see you next week. We will. <laughs> All right, bye-bye. <laughs>